In streams throughout the West, there are stories. Some of these stories have been told, most have not. The native trout species of Western North America are icons, symbols of a wilderness shaped by glaciers, floods, earthquakes, and volcanoes. Many of their stories ended before they were told, but many remain surprisingly resilient. The future for these fish remains uncertain, clouded like a glacier-fed stream. In this series, Native Trout, I will explore and share with you the unique stories of America's western trout. Norm McLean once said, the river was cut by the world's great flood and runs over rocks from the basement of time. On some of the rocks are timeless raindrops. Under the rocks are the words, and some of the words are theirs. Red band didn't take many casts. Beautiful little rainbow trout. Now, what's common with a lot of these red band varieties is the, especially in these small streams, the fish will retain tar-like markings, those dark blotches down the side, interrupted by that distinctive red band that gives them their name, red bands. Uh, they won't grow very large in these small streams because they're just not that productive, but they'll reach sexual maturity at even a small size. A beautiful fish. So there is the Cooley Red Band. The mystery is, is, is this a Columbia River Red Band? I'm not absolutely certain. The story is complicated. I'm going to tell that story today. Let's get this guy back in the stream and uh, on his way. begs the question, are these wild rainbow trout up here in Totes Cooley? What we do know is that uh, I can't find any records of planting trout here. And it seems very possible that rainbow trout could have got here on their own. Um, we know that the origins of rainbow trout are somewhere in Southern California, the Baja, Mexico. That's where their evolutionary origins are. And some 30 to 50,000 years ago, as the glaciers retreated out of the Columbia Basin, rainbow trout spread northward, invading the basin and occupying uh, the streams and many of the streams that they occupy today, and they've been wiped out from many. Uh, 
as they invaded different parts of the western United States, these rainbow trout got isolated through stream migration and through uh, glaciers would cut them off, um, landslides and things like that, and erosion would isolate different streams through uh, waterfalls would create blockage. And what we do know is that uh, from here, this stream, Totes Coulee, flows down and for a while connected with Sinlahican Creek. In the 1950s, an irrigation project in the lower portions of Totes Coulee built a low water dam, which then diverted all the water into a pump station here and pumps it several miles away to a reservoir and permanently cut off the lower portions of Totes Coulee and effectively isolated the rainbow trout that now occupy the upper portions of this stream. Sinlahican Creek then flows all the way through Palmer Lake, which is a natural lake, which is currently occupied by a self-sustaining population of rainbow trout. It's not planted, but there's actually quite a number of beautiful uh, red bands and there are at least rainbows that look like red band trout. From there it flows into the Similkameen River downstream to the Okanagan. Now historically there may have not been a barrier in place that allowed rainbow trout during their initial invasion to move up the Columbia River and up the Okanagan River, Similkameen River and eventually end up here in Totes Coulee, but as time went on through erosion uh, there was waterfalls formed, and behind me, you'll see Enlo Dam on the Similkameen River. This dam sits at the site where previously there was a large series of waterfalls, sometimes called Similkameen Falls or Coyote Falls, and those falls formed a natural barrier for sea-run fish to move up past this point. Based on historical accounts and interviews with uh, local Native Americans, uh, there doesn't seem to have been passage of steelhead or chinook above this point uh, for perhaps hundreds if not thousands of years. Below the dam and from this point down you will find spawning wild steelhead and chinook. However, at some point in the past there must have been passage maybe prior to erosion created that waterfall uh, because you will find rainbow trout in the Similkameen River and all of its tributaries further on up, including Totes Coulee. So it's really hard to say. The, the trout in this stream do show a lot of characteristics reminiscent of Columbia River red bands. Um, and I found some genetic studies, but none of them were conclusive or at least had a sufficient amount of information available for me to determine if they were in fact true Columbia River red band trout. Either way, they are extremely beautiful and they live in a beautiful place and they are very special fish. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe. I'm going to be doing a whole series on native trout in their native range. I'm going to be going across the western United States for the next couple of years, trying to document all the diversity of native trout subspecies and species that are found in our beautiful American western landscape. Thanks guys, be safe out there and catch lots of fish. I'll see you next time.